Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review auction listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. And the reason we do this is to identify common issues that pop up on these vehicles, make sure the sellers are disclosing everything, at least to the extent that we can spot from the videos and the, and the photos. And also, just to talk about these, I'm a big enthusiast for Land Cruisers. I'd assume you're here because you are one too. And I think all of this discussion, discussion can help uh, prepare you should you be in the market and better inform you should you be in the market for yeah, purchasing one of these vehicles. So let's go ahead and look at the vehicle that we're going to study today, which is this uh, no reserve auction for a 1998 uh, UZJ100. So this is a 200, excuse me, a 100 series line cruiser in the first year that they were offered here in the United States. Um, this is in this kind of natural white paint uh, with uh, yeah some sort of uh, yeah gold, gold badging. And yep, KO2 tires. Yeah, looks looks pretty good. Let's go through the details here on the right. Uh, so this is being sold out of Fair Oaks, California. It's got 182,000 miles, which is yeah pretty low for the year. Uh, and everything else here looks pretty normal. It looks like there's a Kenwood CD, um, you know, like aftermarket stereo. Uh, it's got a uh, yeah, receiver hitch and tow package, and yeah, that's kind of it there. Let's go ahead and look at the description here, the text. Uh, so this thing has spent its life registered in Texas and California. Uh, the current owner purchased it in February of 2022, so that they've just had it for a year. And work completed in preparation for the sale included installing Bilstein shocks and replacing the crankshaft seal. Uh, belt tensioner pulley, valve cover gaskets, various suspension components, spark plug tube seals, radiator and heater hoses. It's kind of interesting. A lot of these items that they talked about, like the belt tensioner, crankshaft, seal, um, those are kind of front of engine timing belt type things. But yeah, they didn't mention that yet. Um, that's a question that we'll definitely check out. Uh, this being a 1998, um, it's going to have a locking center differential kind of from the factory. And then um, some of them were optioned with rear locking or locking rear differentials. And this appears to be the case here. Uh, so it's finished in natural white over gray leather. Uh, it's got the normal 16 inch five spoke wheels that comes on these. And let's see, the, it's being sold by the seller on behalf of the owner at no reserve with uh, yeah, manufacturer's information, blah, blah, blah. An accident free Carfax and a clean California title in the owner's name. So, yep, natural white, beige bumpers, and sunroof, receiver hitch, gold badging, roof rack, and running boards. You know, so that was kind of like a, an option package. And, yep, nothing else there. Uh, so it's got BF Goodrich 27570, so I think a little bit larger than stock, but, yeah, pretty, you know, like 31-ish, 32-ish uh, inch tires. And, yeah, KO2s are nice. Good to see the KO instead of the K0. Uh, let's see. Work completed. So they talked about all that stuff. Um, replacing the tie rods. So I'm mentioning some additional work that was done. Replacing the tie rods, axles, and seals. Not sure what, exactly what seals those would be, but upper and lower ball joints and front and rear sway bar bushings and end links. So these are very common issues for this mileage in this year of things that need to be addressed, which kind of normal, you know, suspension wear items. Uh, pretty good looking seat leather for the age. So that's good to see. And yeah, nothing else. A tear is visible on the left rear door upholstery and bubbles are present under the gear selection indicator panel. Um, so the latter of those, the uh, the bubbles, that's a very common thing. Unfortunately, that part's not available. I like unknowingly ordered, not the last one, I'm not going to get into yeah, stupid stuff like that, but <laughs> one of the last ones, yeah, I bought one brand new. And yeah, I, I think they maybe still come and go, um, you know, meaning coming and going out of inventory, but anyway. Yeah, they're kind of hard to find now. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, in the year that they've owned it, the not the seller, but the owner, they've put 8,000 miles on it. Um, so pretty pretty high usage. I don't know if I would necessarily call it a flip, but it's definitely being, you know, short sold. And let's see, here's a little bit more detail of the work that's been completed. So within the last 200 miles uh, includes replacing the crankshaft seal, oil adapter overing, not sure what that is. Maybe that's like an O-ring on the oil filter. Not sure. The idler pulley, valve cover gasket, spark plug tube seals, and radiator and heater hoses. All right. Uh, anyway, undercarriage for Texas, California truck. That looks like you would want it to look. Uh, the skid plate's not there. Um, I'm sure they just took it off for inspection purposes. And I do like the look of those Bilstein shocks under there. Nice touch. Uh, CV axle boots, those all look good. Anyway, we'll get to that. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, let's see, lots of maintenance records, uh, impressive to have that much. It looks like previous owners shared that with, uh, yeah, the, the current owner. So that's good to see. All right, let's go ahead and look at the Carfax report. 
also will grab the VIN and just Google it as well. Uh, but looking at the Carfax report, yeah, it looks like history in Texas and California that lines up with the description and yeah, mileage is ticking up yeah, pretty normally. Nothing, yeah, nothing with there. Where in Texas was this thing? This was in yeah, the Dallas area, it looks like. But most of its life was in California and then yeah, still in um, Southern California. All right, so I plugged this into Google and vehiclehistory.com and nothing shows up. So yeah, nothing, nothing more there. All right, let's go ahead and jump in the, into the gallery. I will note that there are no videos yet. All right, so looking at the vehicle, yeah, it looks, looks pretty clean. Uh, nothing really jumping out at me body-wise right off the bat, just a little fading like on the running boards. Um, maybe a little bit bigger of a gap here on the driver's side between the lower valence and the bumper. Uh, we'll validate with that, validate that with a nice front-on shot, uh, hopefully. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty clean. Appreciate the license plate. I'm assuming it's uh, one gas guzzler. <laughs> uh, even, you know, given the mileage, seeing the fog lights be, especially for Southern California and Texas usage, um, it's a little curious, uh, not not to say things are out of place, but yeah, those, uh, the headlights on these 100 series, because they're made of glass, they don't really, you know, fade, but yeah, the fog lights will. And kind of funny enough, the clear, or the, the sorry, the corner indicator lights, yeah, those don't fade either. So there's, yeah, some sort of formulation difference between, um, yeah, the plastic and the, you know, between the fog lights and those. But um, anyway, fog lights aren't uh, faded, which, yeah, kind of unusual given where it's at. We'll see if we can find any other indication of, um, uh, yeah, sun damage. But I do see, you know, normal amounts of kind of like rock chips and, you know, things of that nature across the front. This front bumper definitely is wavy. Not, not quite sure why it's wavy, but that's, you know, that's a thing. And then maybe a little bit of like misalignment on this bumper here on the passenger side in between that and the front fender. Let's go back to the driver's side and see if we see something similar. Yeah, it's kind of the same. So maybe that's nothing. Um, yeah, I would like to see if this is as straight of a shot that we get, you can see how the, the gap here between the lower valence and that corner marker light on the passenger side is a little bit tighter than it is on the driver's side. So, I don't know. Not to say something. There's obviously something going on with the waviness in the bumper, but yeah, super minor. Looking down the passenger side of the vehicle seems pretty clean. Uh, the, the paint color and the gaps and, and all that, that all seems to be how it should be. Similar fading on the running boards on that side. And yeah, good luck with these. Yeah, pretty clean, pretty clean looking truck. It uh, looks like an aftermarket hitch, perhaps. Um, yeah, looks looks clean. The, yeah, the gold package, you know, the gold emblems, yeah, they're kind of like really antiquates it in my mind. Um, yeah, I would love to see those be either, you know, kind of like either a black or, yeah, just a normal chrome. A little bit of wear on this little, you know, kind of plastic rubber, uh, like step on the back of the bumper. Otherwise, the back bumper looks pretty good i will note this is a little weird here um so okay that's all the zoom i get all right so and it's i don't think it's the angle but the way this bumper it looks like it's shifted to the left to the driver's side because the lower hatch is behind this little lip if if you think about how this operates right so you lift up the top hatch and then you lift you know you, you lower the bottom this is going to rub and I would assume if we can get like a detail shot right there, you're likely going to see some wear there in the paint because this bumper is misaligned a little bit. So it's curious to keep your keep your like mind on that. Uh, that's not quite right. Um, so, yep, not quite sure what to make of that yet. And, and yeah, I'm pretty sure that would be rubbing. So hopefully we get a good photo there. But looking at the back, I wouldn't, you know, necessarily say besides seeing that like conflict doesn't really seem like it's too out of place. You know, it doesn't really seem like it's shifted to the left, but anyway, maybe we can get a better photo later. Looking on the driver's side of the vehicle now, yeah, it seems pretty good and normal. Nothing really calling out to me being out of place. All of the, like the belt molding here, that all like looks, you know, like it more or less matches. Nothing really concerning there. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. It's, uh, I didn't cover the price. I think it's only bid up to like, you know, 1600 bucks right now. I'm sure that'll change. Not quite sure why it's so low. Usually you see, you know, kind of like it sitting below like, you know, 10K for stuff like this. So, 
Yeah, but good looking truck. Appreciate the yeah, different lighting conditions. And yeah, let's blow through the rest of these. Just making sure nothing else. I'm going to look for a detail photo here. Could it just be that like lighting condition? Sorry, I'm going to go back here. I mean, this photo here definitely looks like the tailgate is behind the bumper. But this one, this angle seems to show that it's that it's not but that doesn't make sense <laughs> like if you think about it, so this photo's you know taken higher up so would a photo with the camera being lower yeah that just doesn't I don't know it doesn't make sense I know we're shifted over to the side anyway all right I want a detail photo of that before I yeah pass judgment but it doesn't look right all right, moving through the rest of these photos here. They stopped hopefully in a safe spot in the middle of the road to take these shots. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit of like wear from the driver getting in and out. Yeah, otherwise that's kind of the only real like defect I'm seeing here. Looks pretty clean. Uh, seeing the antenna, you know, kind of quarter of the way or part way up, that's a good sign. Hopefully that still works. All right, here's some detail shots of the front bumper. Maybe a slight color difference between this lower valence and the fender, at least on that um, passenger side. Looks, yeah, looks more or less normal, I guess, on the driver's side. And yeah, you can see some you know chips and, and some cracking there in the paint. But yeah, those fog lights, those look really good. I, I, I don't know. I'd like to think they've been replaced based on how clear they look. But, you know, you never know. Hood looks good and glossy. Fender, you can see. A, so this is what makes me think that those fog lights have been replaced because that's way too glossy for what this, uh, you know, plastic painted uh, side view mirror looks. Like this looks, you know, hazy, looks oxidized. Yeah, you can see it with that detail shot. <laughs> All right, moving here to the back, and yeah, nothing really catching my attention there. Just photos of the glass, I'd assume. Yeah, if you look closely enough, you can probably see the etchings on the glass. Uh, rear tail light on the driver's side looks good. Rear glass looks good. I think, I think that they readjusted the... How did I miss that? Anyway, I think they adjusted the bumper somehow in between these photos. That's my thought. There's looks like there's some yeah, like a dent that was like painted here. How did I miss that? Was that not in the other photos? There's no way I missed that. Okay, I missed it. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, big big glaring like yeah, repaint thing. Anyway, it, it's a plastic bumper, it's not gonna rest. I, I appreciate them yeah, getting after it and yeah, sorry I should give like an epilepsy warning for me flipping through these photos so fast but yeah a little bit of cracking in that paint kind of makes me think that it had been yeah re repainted at some point um but yeah you can see this corner here for the lower tailgate portion and it seems fine so maybe it was just in that photo maybe it was the angle yeah i don't know A uh, little bit of wear in the paint on the yeah, roof rack bars. Yeah, pretty pretty normal. All right, I think I'm done with the exterior. A little, little bit of paint wear on the uh, this little piece on the you know, behind the rocker. And just some like minor color things here at the bottom of the uh, rocker panels on the passenger side. I'm trying to think of what I'm seeing here at the... Um, the running board is, you know, kind of like a paint line, but yeah, I don't, don't think so. It's kind of funny how this uh, passenger side mirror is much more glossy and seems like it's in better shape than the driver's side one. All right, there's a detailed shot of that defect in the back bumper. And you got pictures of the etchings. Make sure those, not, not that you need to, but yeah, those VINs probably all match. All right, looking here at the wheel well, again, don't just look at the wheel. Um, look at, I'm 
I'm trying to tell myself whether or not those wheels are the original style. It's going to bug me until I look it up. But, uh, and again, they're obviously a Toyota wheel, but I feel like the style is a little bit different for the, at least the ones that were on my 99. Anyway, this uh, little pinch weld, that all looks good. Doesn't look rusted. You wouldn't expect it to be rusted with its life in California and um, in Texas. Uh, we'll note that the little plug here for the uh, yeah, brake adjuster is missing. Looks like it's on both sides that it's missing. Uh, front wheels and wheel well, that all looks good. Yep, nothing really notable there. All right, moving to the interior. Um, yeah, pretty clean interior, looks nice. I know some people, they're not huge fans of the of that gray, but it really doesn't look too bad. Steering wheel looks actually in really good shape for the mileage. And yep, I think, um, yep. I think something happened with the finish on this uh, driver's side mirror because you know, looking at the leather, looking at the steering wheel, looking at the shifter handle, I just don't see a lot of yeah, center exposure. So good for them. I'll, you know, this driver or this passenger side bolster, that doesn't look great. But yeah, that's pretty normal, I think, for the mileage. But I don't, yeah, I don't think this thing saw a lot of sun. That's my guess. But yeah, interior, yeah, that all looks good. The wood trim is still surprisingly yeah, in, intact and in place. And yes, steering wheel looks really good. I don't think that's a recover. I think that's the, uh, yeah, the original leather. Yeah, it looks good. All right, uh, let's see. So we don't get a photo of the dash with the, with the engine running. Um, but yeah, 181,762 miles. Yeah, this is a good. This is a good spot to purchase this. Um, be Pre-pandemic, I don't think this is worth any more than like, you know, 10k, 11k. Uh, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see where this ends up. But you can see that bubbling in this gear uh, indicator kind of panel. Um, yeah, very, very common on those. Not, not the best like camera for these photos, but I yeah definitely appreciate the detail. Lots of little scratches, but it looks good. No cracks in the dash. Again, I have yet to see a, a dash crack on a on a hundred series. All right, look into the driver's seat. You can see, yeah, there's quite a bit of wear on the seat itself and in the leather. Uh, a little bit of staining here at the bottom of the door. Maybe a little bit on this weather strip in the seal, but I mean, for the most part, yeah, it's pretty good. Get some conditioner on that. I think you can bring it, you know, and work it over time and yeah, bring it back to life. Cup holders look good. Uh, looking at the rear. I'm going to guess these are, um, you know, it's like an aftermarket, like the pile on the carpet, you know, for that floor mat doesn't, doesn't look right, but, um, yeah, carpets seem clean. Seatbelts look clean. Um, I'm curious as to what's in this bottle. <laughs> looks like orange juice that you spray out of a, out of a bottle. Um, all right. So we've got here a little nub. So this is a paintless dent repair indication, I believe. Um, so meaning that in this rear quarter panel on the driver's side, you know, somebody's, you know, drilled into the door jam here and popped out a dent. So we'll see if there are any more of those in the door jams or if we even see photos. Uh, rear seats look good and clean. Yeah, I mean, pretty, pretty good looking truck. Uh, hopefully that's not somebody's pubic hair. Uh, I don't know if it is, it's, maybe it's not a big deal, but <laughs> looks looks like the uh, little fabric here for the, um, the, yeah, the seat backs kind of pulling away. It's not sitting where it should. This, this wood seems like it's a different finish. It seems really dark. Maybe it's just the camera and the light, but anyway, just thought I'd mention it. It doesn't seem to match exactly what we saw on the dash. There's those floor mats again. My my tendency is to think these are these are aftermarket floor mats, but yeah, I mean they're relatively clean. Are those scratches or are there those are two pubes? I don't know. <laughs> Never thought I'd say pubes. All right, so there's more confirmation of paintless dent repair. So we've got a drill mark or a you know a little cover here. At least they did like a nice body matching you know white. And then looks like on this door, the little stay that keeps the door from swinging out all the way, that's missing and broken. So that'll need to be replaced. Also, the courtesy light's not on on this rear passenger door. Those probably aren't pubes. I don't know. <laughs> all right. The netting is a little torn up on this front door. Um, from this angle, not seeing any paintless dent repair on the uh, front passenger door. But everything else seems yeah, more or less in place. 
And similar story on the front driver door. Uh, yeah, no, no sign of paintless dent repair. And the way the photo's taken, I don't see VIN stickers either, but yeah, they're probably there. Looks pretty good. Nice and clean. All right, so now I'm curious. So there's a little there's a little bulge here. That's those are on the doors. That's on all of them. Let me go back to this and yeah, epilepsy warning to those. Um, let me go back to the rear passenger door. Yeah, so this you know don't confuse this little nub, this kind of you know outward indentation with this right, this little plug here right. All right, so yeah, close your eyes. I'm gonna go back again. Uh, let's see. So this is the uh, rear door. It looks like a little crack in the top of the door card. Yeah, what are you going to do? All right. Looking here at the back in the cargo area, that looks good. Some of the telltales for rust, these door handles and the screws, those all look good. So yeah, not really expecting any rust concerns on this vehicle. Rear looks good on this uh, passenger side. Carpet looks good. Yeah, really no concerns there. And it's got oh so this is interesting so this uh this particular vehicle doesn't have the rear ac so usually you'll see like this popping out and you know there's like a little vent here and that's where i think the air intake is for the yeah for the little blower for the rear ac and so yeah if we were to get a photo of the and oh you, you also note that we don't have vents up here so i think that's a huge plus that means that in these panels that are behind this seat on the passenger side that they're like there's some storage bins it's actually really nice and it's not taken up by this rear um yeah H HVAC unit in the back and then because of that yeah you don't have the vents and then you're not going to have the control that's on the driver's side on the ceiling so yeah kind of a cool thing nice little like delete package uh you know I wouldn't necessarily call it like a poverty pack but you know it's something uh, and we'll go back. I'm curious if it has the venting rear windows or not. I don't recall seeing that, but all right, moving to the engine bay. I see a vent sticker on the passenger side uh, and driver's side is out of frame. I don't see one there. Yeah, so I don't see a sticker on the uh, driver's side. And then I do see what appears to be some, uh, you know, turn marks on these bolts. So that yeah, I'm gonna guess either that front fender's been replaced or it's been off for paint. So it's yeah, it's cut something here on the left side that's not being disclosed. Otherwise, engine bay looks to be yeah, more or less intact and looks like it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, nothing really yeah calling my attention there. Coolant's you know good color. And then, yeah, this is a good photo to show how those bolts have been turned. And yeah, there's definitely no VIN sticker. I don't see that it's been like overpainted. So yeah, I'm assuming, you know, my, it's fair to assume in my opinion, that's a, um, yeah, that's a fender replacement. So, all right. But undercarriage looks nice and clean. Just some like minor corrosion on some of the surfaces. Yeah, nothing, nothing I'd worry about. And yeah, confirmation that the CV axles have been done. Uh, upper ball joint looks like that's been done. Can't see the lower ball joints in these photos. So you can see them there. So they've yeah, pressed that out. Uh, tie rod ends have been replaced as well. Those look to be um, yeah, factory units because they've been yeah, painted. Whereas most of the 555s that people buy, yeah, those aren't painted and they flash rust really quickly. It looks nice and clean under here. You kind of know, no complaints there. Looks good. All right, back of the transfer case is dry. Uh, it's amazing to see cat shields not like totally rusted out. <laughs> so those are, yeah, those are still in place and they look good. Uh, rear axle looks good. Just some minor surface rust there. Um, passenger side looks looks good as well. Yeah, pretty clean frame. It's not perfect, but it's like 99, 99%. Yeah, it looks pretty good. New sway bar end links and, and cushions there. Uh, that's I think, the rear axle. Yeah, nice. All right, so there's your stickers, paperwork. Nice big stack of stuff. Um, 
some recent work that's been done. So yeah, door lock, actuator, removal and replace. They've, you know, those are very common things. Looks like they've replaced those all over the vehicle. This is insane though. Look at these, look at these prices. So $3,000. So I posted a video. I'll include a link in the description. Do not pay $3,000 for this. This is wild. So they got charged <laughs> 343 bucks, sorry, 600 bucks just to diagnose it and to do the labor on that to get to that point. And then they replaced some door lock actuators, door lock assembly to the tune of like 343 bucks. That's wild because those motors, they cost, it's like, you know, what, four or five for like 25 bucks or something. And then, you know, you need a little like plastic JB weld and yeah, and it just takes a couple hours. Like you could do an entire vehicle in, you know, like an afternoon. So, yep, that's crazy money, crazy money to spend on that. Not a good use of funds. There is, yeah, much, much better things to spend your money on than, than those door lock actuators. Oh, anyway, so yeah, there's that. Uh, looks like it's, you know, got, uh, yeah, timing belt, well, it says drive belt. So this is water pump O-ring drive belt. I don't see timing belt. So that's one thing we haven't resolved yet as to whether or not we've seen a timing belt change yet. Um, not seeing it here. There it is. Replace timing belt. Replace water pump. Yeah, 1500 bucks worth. Um, yeah, I'll assume that this stuff was done. So that was done in actually 2009. So this is going backward in time. Okay, water pump, water pump and timing belt back in uh, 2019. So that's recent enough. Uh, done at 167,000 miles, so that's good. These records are good enough. Um, I'm curious if they documented the... Um, yeah, that repair to that front fender. So let's take a little quick little look through this. They replaced the turn signal lens assembly on both sides. Looks like the bulbs, perhaps. Okay. They got charged for a clutch replacement. Maybe that's the AC system, not quite sure. <laughs> or the fan clutch, maybe. We've got a right wheel bearing. Master cylinder, front rotors. Okay, so these are all going back in time. Fuel filter. These are all the things that you know these these vehicles all need. Uh, radiator. So I guess it's had its second radiator. So that's kind of interesting. Wonder if they used a crappy one. Although two hundred seventy five bucks that indicates to me an OEM one, especially back in twenty fifteen. But so the only thing that's really making me think about that front. Uh, fender being replaced. There was one one of the notes here. So they painted the luggage rack, paint and repair all four wheels. So that's you know they've they're they're doing you know and that's just after what twelve years that they're doing that. So it's very interesting. But I see here this panel A. I'm gonna Google this because I'm very curious about this number. So let me type this in. Bear with me. All right, so we're going to Google this. This is a front door. Is that the right number? Yeah, so that's a front door assembly. Is it the inside or the outside? Let's see. In interior door panel. So they replaced an interior door panel, it looks like, to the tune of 800 bucks back in 2008. So that's not the fender and I don't see anything else there they replaced the wheel in 2005 why would you I, yeah, maybe they hit a curb I don't know all right still not seeing the fender replacement I mean these records are really good this is exactly what you want to see when you buy a vehicle That's why the heat shields look good, because they replaced them in 2002. The antenna mast was already broken in, uh, in 2002 as well. Refinished moldings, mirror, and paint hood and fender. Nailed it! 2002, in January, there was damage to the paint, or to the hood, and the fender, and that mirror. That's why... 
that mirror on that side looks like garbage. That's why the fender has been repainted. And I didn't notice the hood, but um, yeah, and we didn't see that Vince sticker either just because we weren't necessarily looking. So that's sad. Four, four years into it, yeah, they replaced that. What did they, what did they charge for that? I'm curious. So refinish moldings, mirror, paint and hood and fender. Yeah, 925 bucks. That's a good, pretty good price. <laughs> so there you have it. So yeah, it looks like the hood's been repainted. I'm mad I didn't catch that. I should have seen the stone chimps, but I didn't. But it happened so early. It happened so early in its life, so I shouldn't be so hard on myself. There were only four years that that hood, um, you know, is, is hiding. But yeah, now that you know, you can see, yeah, there's a color difference there. And coming to the, let's see, coming to the driver's side, we should not see that color difference because they were, you know, painted at the same time. And yeah, I feel like those are a little bit closer, so... Anyway, yep, caught something there on that side. There we go. Good job, detective. <laughs> All right, so regarding price, um, I don't think that's going to you know, make a lot of people you know, concerned about it. Um, you know, it just might affect the price a little bit. So given the mileage and the price, I mean, this could go, you know, let's say, and hoping, hoping things like come down a little bit. So again, pre-pandemic, this isn't any more than like 10, 11,000. Um, I think this will go to, yeah, like 18, 17, 18. That seems like a fair price. Um, I mean, yeah, too much for me, but I'd love, I've, I'd, given the, in the market now, I don't think I'd pay any more than, yeah, like, you know, I don't know, 14, 15 for it. But anyway, let's say 17.5, that'll be the price that it goes to. Uh, it's no reserve, so it'll sell for what it sells for. So there you have it. Anyway. Let me know what you think about this one. Pretty clean truck. Um, yeah, it would be a good little good little project. Looks like it's had a lot of money spent on it for maintenance, and that's and it's well documented. That's what you want to buy. So anyway, just had a fender replacement, which yeah, really not a big deal in the big scheme of things, especially if you're going to go off road it. So all right, well thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day, and yeah, I'll see you on the next one.